All right. The defense for Texas was largely looked at as being the stopping point in a national championship run, in specific the secondary. Uh, there is much analysis of what that has looked like during the BCS era and the college football playoff era. Probably one of the worst defenses that I can think of that won a national championship was Auburn in 2010. Uh, we also had the LSU defense, which was not stellar in 2019. Uh, your thoughts about Texas's defensive performance and how good it could be this year? Yeah, so I everyone's saying the defense will be the problem, the defense will be the problem, and I agree with that um, to an extent. And I was just curious of like how teams ranked pass defense-wise, rush defense-wise, uh, per run and also total and per pass in total. So I look back at the college football playoff in the last 10 winners and basically, and I, I was going to include third down percentage defense in this, but what I realized when I started to dig into third down percentage, it's very random and it's basically not repeatable. For example, 2021 Georgia, which you could argue during the college football playoff era was the best defense. They were 43rd in the country on third down percentage, which isn't great. So I was kind of shocked by that. I was like, okay, maybe it doesn't matter. Um, and, but overall, when you look through pass defense, run defense, there's a couple outliers, but they're all about the same. So the um, lowest per um, pass defense ever in the or in the college football playoff area era is tied for two. 2018 Clemson, and this one's kind of surprising too. 2022 Georgia. They're both 25th. That's the worst you get. It's the 21st pass defense. Per pass uh, attempt okay, in per the Per pass attempt? So that's yes. a little defense pass. No. Okay. No. Good. Um, total defense, though, is you hit the nail on the head with this one, Mark. Kind of uh, it's second. LSU is 222.7 yards allowed during the national championship run with Joe Burrow. This one did surprise me. 20 Bama's the worst. The year afterwards with Mac Jones, 239.02 yards allowed per game, but they were elite elite rush defense one of the best was 78.9 yards uh allowed per game that season so you have to be good somewhere like when when i broke these down per run and per pass attempt you had to be in the top 13 that was the average the average was 13th best for both of them it was 12.7 and 13.2 for pass so you have to be a top 13 team there overall total wise you had to be top eight rush defense a top eight rush defense and a top 20 pass defense so the pass defense i think you can be worse on which makes sense i think it's easier to pass as it is to run in modern day football with the talent you have the rules and all of that thing uh sort of thing so texas if you take i just looked at back at their last two years because i think it's unfair to judge steve sarkeesian on his first year especially defensive wise um surprisingly two years ago Pass defense, they gave up 6.3 yards per pass attempt and 242.7 yards per game. The average for the pass defense, when I looked it up for the 10 national championship winners, was 196.7 yards allowed overall. So Texas is allowing about 43 yards more. And then per play-wise, it's 6.04. So about two-tenths more um, overall than Texas was giving up two years ago. The average just between the two years, because Texas was way worse uh, last year than they were two years ago on pass defense, they allowed 7.08 yards per pass attempt, uh, is 6.69. So Texas is going to have to get half a yard per pass better over their average over the last two years, in my opinion, to compete for or a real to have a real chance to win a national championship run defense. Actually, we're right there. 104.05 yards per game. 102.54 is the average. We're right there. If the run defense stays the same over the last two years, we can win a national championship. The pass defense is what is holding us back. We just have to be a little bit better. Half a yard per attempt. Uh, and if we get to that, I think with this offense, we can win a national champion uh, can win a national championship. So a few thoughts from me here, Matthew, and I've looked at this kind of stuff pretty extensively through the years doing various projects. One would be we all have to understand that the schedules for those teams that win national championships, you have to understand that they're tacking on three games at the end of the season against three of the best teams in the country. So <laughs> that even makes it more impressive what they're able to do statistically. You know, take, take 2021 Georgia, they're playing Alabama, Michigan, 
and Alabama again, the final three games of the season and trying to uphold both offensive and defensive numbers that are among the best in the nation. So yeah. uh, that that's a difficult task. So that even accentuates how good these statistics are uh, because they're tacking on extra games against the best teams in the country. Uh, the other thing is, I'd be curious about the pass efficiency defense because what I've noticed, and again, I don't have it stored, but just again, empirical evidence based on a bunch of projects is that the, the pass rating, the passer rating defensively has been extraordinary for most of these teams. The, the like touchdown to t uh, pick ratio is always really good. Let's see Michigan last year. What are we looking at last year? They were third in the country in passer rating against. They gave up eight touchdown passes and 18 picks. Uh, let's see. It would be Georgia the year before in 2022. Their passer rating against. They were down at 15, but again, they only gave up 15 touchdown passes and 12 picks and they faced Bryce Young twice. Uh, it, I think that that's a pretty telling statistic down through the years, the, the passer rating. Look at Georgia in 2021, 10 touchdowns, 16 picks, had the number two passer rating in the country. And obviously Cincinnati had those two corners and they finished number one that year. Yeah, I mean, there's only really two outliers on this list, Mark, that skew the numbers, and it's 20 Bama and 19 LSU. So – I've said, I don't know, about a month and a half ago, two months ago, I mentioned for the first time, I think Texas's path to a national championship this year is that formula. I don't think they're going to be a lead on the back end. I think their edges are going to be decent enough to get to the quarterback and help out the back end this year. But I think Quinn Ewers is going to have to be a Mac Jones, going to have to be a Quinn or going to have to be a Joe Burrow because that's the type of team we have. We have the talent. Honestly, I think 20 Bama is the closest thing that I can think of because you have Steve Sarkeesian running the offense. If I was um, Steve Sarkeesian, I am handing that tape to Quinn Ewers and say, if you execute like this with the talent we have at running back, at line, our offensive line, and at wide receiver, we can do this. And I think we can match Alabama's type of defense. Like I said, run defensive-wise, they gave up 113.1 yards per game. Um, they were 12th in the country per run. I think we can kind of be in that ballpark. And they gave up 239.02 yards per game, 6.64 yards per attempt, which was 20th in the country. I think we can be somewhere in there, and I think our offense can replicate that. I think that is the path to a national championship for Texas. And I think, honestly, that's going to be the only path unless – the secondary just grows so much. I don't see us going from 7.808 yards per pass attempt to 6.04. I just don't see that happening. That's over a yard per attempt in one year with the same amount of talent. I think the safeties have definitely gotten more talented and better, but I don't know about the cornerbacks. That Alabama team got torched twice. They played Ole Miss and gave up 48 points and a zillion yards, like 600 yards. Uh, tied game with about five minutes left in Oxford and won 63-48. And then they got torched by Kyle Flass, uh, Trask and that uh, Kyle Pitts team in the SEC championship game, uh, but won that game. Uh, they played well in the playoffs against Notre Dame and Ohio State. Uh, the LSU team in 2019, I got to say, uh, when they really needed it against Clemson, that was a tight game, 28-25, late third quarter, early fourth quarter. And they really played a great fourth quarter against uh, Trevor Lawrence and pitched a shutout uh, to close out that game. And the Oklahoma game, all you had to do was watch the first 10 plays of the game and you knew who the superior team was. So giving up 20 po 28 points was like it didn't matter. Uh, so I'm sure that was a ton of garbage yardage because they completely blew them out of the stadium. Uh, but they faced two of that year, of course, in a classic game uh, and played a just brutal schedule, Texas included, of course. Yeah, and I think that's the way forward. You have to have all-time, basically, quarterback performances the whole year. I mean, Mac Jones came in, what, second in the Heisman that year behind his teammate who he was throwing to, and Devontae Smith, who had an insane year, probably the best, one of the best years ever for a wide receiver. And then you had Joe Burrow have the best single season in the history of college football. So that's what I'm saying. Quinn Ewers is going to have to do something similar for that for Texas to win the national championship. They're, I think they'll make the playoffs. I'd bet a lot of money that they would make the playoffs. I don't – but – 
for them in the fan base, for whatever reason, national championship is the expectation. That isn't my expectation. I don't think we have the talent, like I said, on the back end. And I love Quinn Ewers, but I don't believe in him enough to say that he's going to duplicate a Mac Jones type season or a Joe Burrow type season. I think the ceiling for this team right now as constructed and without seeing a game to me is again, what they did last year, a top four team. I think that's the ceiling. I think Oregon with the additions they have made, I think they're the third best team in college football. I think Ohio state and Georgia are kind of in a tier by themselves. I think the only thing holding Ohio state back right now is their quarterback. And I kind of want to see more from Carson Beck too, because in some big games last year, Carson Beck, in my opinion, did not live up to expectations. So can that be the difference? If Quinn Ewers takes that next step and is just better than every quarterback he faces, we've seen in the history of college football, 2005 national championship game. I think USC had more talent. Guess what? They had they didn't have Vince Young, and that's what it came down to. So Quinn Ewers, that's what's going to take, in my opinion, this year for Texas to win a national championship.